Hey guys, what's up? Thanks so much for joining me today. This is Philosophy. Today's video is all about condo living. So I am one and a half years into living in my current condo, which is in downtown Calgary. I wanted to go through some of the things that I've learned, the upsides, the downsides, let's jump in. So for some background for you on the condo that I live in, I live right in an area called the Beltline, which is right downtown in Calgary. The purchase price for my condo, which is a two bedroom condo, just under a thousand square feet was $200,000. My mortgage was for a term of five years at an interest rate of 1.74%, and that was through TD Bank. The building that I purchased in is an older building built back in the 70s, so I think that has a lot to do with why this unit was a bit on the lower end in terms of price. The condo fees that I currently pay for this unit are just under $700 per month. And my mortgage payment is around the same. The condo that I own has gone up in value about $50,000 and I haven't had it appraised, but when I got a second mortgage at the bank for the other condo that I own, they did a valuation of this property and it came out to about $250,000. So that is something I don't include in my net worth or any kind of financial things because I have no plans on selling this unit in the future or anytime soon. So let's go through some of the things that I've learned while living in a condo. The first thing is that security is a really big issue. Living downtown in Calgary, or for that matter, any city is going to have a lot of homelessness, crime, violence, and issues with security at a condo building. I suppose this goes the same for a detached home, but when you're living in a condo, you don't have as much control over what you can do to secure your property. So the building that I live in, we share a plot of land, we share a parkade and a back parking area with another building, which is right next door. This other building has a completely different condo board and different rules, different bylaws, everything is different. So when we're trying to deal with these security issues, we have to come to an agreement with this other building and they are just not cooperating. So this means that a lot of the security issues we want to fix, we want to put money into making the building more secure. We just can't do because the property that's next to us has an open area where people can just come right into our side of the property. So this makes a really, really difficult situation. It'd be very similar to having an unruly neighbor who's really trying to make your life miserable. This is something I did not take into consideration when looking at this property. I knew that they kind of shared some of the common spaces, but I didn't realize that it would prevent us from actually making the building more secure and livable. This is something I would definitely recommend you look into. If you're looking at a condominium and it's sharing some spaces with another property, I would probably avoid buying in that building because you have zero control over the other property. So I decided to join my building's condo board. I've been on it for just about a year and this allows me to have a voice and try to help the situation in the building. This is something I really recommend if you're a first time condo owner and you wanna be a bit more involved in making sure that the building you purchased in is being taken care of. It's a huge benefit if you're in any kind of industry that deals with condos and you know a little bit about the behind the scenes things. Being on a condo board is a big responsibility. It definitely takes up quite a bit of time. You're constantly communicating with other people on the board, dealing with day-to-day -day issues and also longer term items. This is something that can consume a lot of your life if you have a full-time job, if you have children, younger children, and you have a lot of responsibilities, joining the condo board might not be the best option for you because it really does take a lot of time and effort to be a valuable and attentive condo board member to be able to serve the owners in that building to make sure everything is taken care of. I do enjoy being on the condo board because I get an inside look at what is going on and what might be coming up in terms of large repairs or large expenses. The next thing I wanna talk about is the location. So because I live right downtown in the city center, this is an area that I would never in my wildest dreams be able to afford a detached home in because they're well over a million dollars 
and a condo is just such a small fraction of that price while also getting the benefits of having a downtown lifestyle. I would recommend condo living for anyone who does really enjoy living downtown, being able to walk everywhere, being walkable to transit, instead of moving out into the suburbs just so you can afford a detached house because location is really everything when it comes to real estate and buying a condominium allows you to live in a more central location for a much lower price than buying detached. The building that I live in is a concrete building. This was a key item when I was looking at condos. Concrete buildings are quite a bit quieter than other types of buildings. So we live on the top floor and we have two walls that go to different units and relatively quiet in this building. We don't really hear our neighbors very often. The building we lived in before this condo was an apartment building, which was also concrete. And I don't think we ever heard any of our neighbors at any point in time being inside. If you were outside on the patio, you could hear people, same here. But I definitely recommend it if you're considering purchasing a condominium to make sure that you're looking at the structure of that building where you are, like how many neighbors you have, if you're above or below certain people and what the construction is of the flooring. I do find concrete is really good at making sure that you don't hear your neighbors, which is really important to me. Another huge benefit to living in a condominium is that it's super low or even no maintenance. We only have to maintain our unit and balcony, make sure that we're fixing anything up on the inside but in terms of lawn maintenance, roof repairs, any kind of large building system repairs, that is all taken care of by the condo board and its reserve fund. The reserve fund is where your condo fees go. So your condo fees will eventually pay for repairs in the building, but you're not hit with a huge bill right all at once unless something major, major happens and you're into something called a special assessment, which hopefully if you're considering a condo, you make sure you look into your building's age and how old it is, how many major repairs have been happening. And you have to kind of play a guessing game with whether or not you think something like a special assessment might happen. That is a risk that you have to take with owning a condo. Same as owning a home, you could have to replace your roof or do foundational work or anything at some point in time, which can be a really big bill to the owner. Some of the downsides I've noticed to living in a condo is that you have to get permission to do any kind of renovation. This doesn't include things like painting or minor touch-ups or items that are considered cosmetic, but if you want to replace anything in your kitchen, upgrade certain things, remove walls, change wiring, alter some plumbing, you're gonna have to get permission from the condo board. And this can take months and months and months. This is something that is a huge frustration point for myself and also a lot of other owners in the building. If you wanna replace your floors, you're gonna to have to make sure you're meeting minimum requirements. A lot of the times, if you're changing any kind of electrical or plumbing, you're going to have to have a licensed professional come in to do this. And that is a requirement from the bylaws with your condo board. You can't just go ahead and do things DIY, do it yourself when it comes to bigger renovations because there is a liability issue if you do something incorrectly and damage the common structure in the property. So this is a huge thing. If you think you're buying a condo that's a fixer upper and you're just gonna take everything out, gut it and redo it all, you're probably gonna be waiting quite a few months to get that approval. Otherwise you could get into a lot of trouble with the condo board. The last downside on this list is that the building that I purchased into is quite a bit older and I knew that there were risks going into that. That is why I did a full review of the condo board's documents and all the repairs they had done in the last probably 10 to 15 years. However, there is a big risk that some major work needs to be done in the time that I'm going to be owning this condo from, you know, 10, 30, 40, 50 years. So that is something I have to consider and potentially start putting money aside for in case a special assessment happens. If a special assessment does happen and every owner has to pay say $20,000 to make sure that everything gets fixed, that could be a huge blow to the majority of people, but especially to someone who is trying to save up for something like fire. Overall, I think I made a good decision in deciding to purchase a condominium over a detached home for my first property. 
because it really gave me some insight into what condo living is like and how much I actually value the location over what the property is. I always thought that I would want a detached house with a backyard and space and a garage and the ability to do whatever I wanted at any point. But I actually think that the location is the number one biggest thing. Location and lifestyle and the ability to be able to get rid of my car because I live downtown was a huge bonus. And I definitely recommend doing this kind of thing if you're not really sure what to do because you can always go up, you can always move into a detached home later in life, sell your condominium or keep it as a rental property, but it would be pretty difficult to start in a detached home and then downsize into a smaller apartment because we just naturally fill the space that we're in. If you're going to buy like a bigger house with a bunch of bedrooms, you're probably gonna end up filling that whole house and then downsizing if you wanted to try the condo thing would be very difficult. So I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments below about your living situation. Do you also live in a condo? Do you own a condo? Are you considering purchasing one? Or do you think that purchasing a detached home is more for you? Thank you so much for joining me for this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.